Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This week I'll be doing a tech talk about how to use your DSLR camera, whether it be Nikon, Canon, Sony, Olympus, any camera. These three settings I'll be teaching you will help generate better photographs for you guys if you're having problems. And I will talk about um, how I shoot my portraits, um, whether it be me or of other people. I will do a little talk about that as well throughout the video. And so what I will be basically doing is on this side of the video, I will be putting clips that I have taken off my phone showing you how I set up my camera and what each of the settings that I use means. So you guys get a better understanding. It may take some time for you guys to understand what each setting means regardless of watching this video once. You may want to watch it a few times just so you guys understand or even make notes um, to keep with you just so you don't forget what the settings mean. Um, and yeah, so if you guys really want to know how this works and how to take better portraits, just keep watching. And if you really like this video and it helps you out, just subscribe and like at the end of the video. And I will see you guys super soon, I hope. I have been pretty AWOL. I've been busy with school and work, so I'm doing my best to squeeze in some videos. So hopefully you guys like this video, and yeah, let's get started. Okay, so firstly, I will be showing you how to set up um, a really nice general basic setup for self-portraits or if you're taking portraits of other people. So if you're shooting inside, what I always recommend for beginners is to use a plain black, a plain neutral colored wall. You can even do black, you can do white, you can do beige, you can do gray. Um, I actually recommend starting out with lighter colors first because black is a little hard to light up. But uh, what I do is I use this neutral background here in the back for most of my portraits that I do at home if they don't have to do with outside. And uh, before you touch any of the buttons, you want to make sure that you're taking the dial on the left hand side um, and making sure that it is at the M symbol. So the M symbol means manual and basically all the other symbols don't really matter. All the other settings don't really matter right now. Um, manual is the basic setting that you should be on because this controls your ISO, your aperture, and your shutter speed. These three things combined create a really beautiful image and this is what's really going to help light up your images. So once you have that set up on manual, you have the option of changing ISO, shutter speed, and aperture around to your liking. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about ISO. So ISO is a level of sensitivity in a photograph. So what ISO really does is it starts at, well on my camera, it starts at a lowest of 100 and then goes up to maybe 3200. So the, the higher the number, the brighter your image gets, but with that comes noise. And what noise is, is like it's a grainy effect on the image. So if you have taken an image and it's kind of like blurry, fuzzy kind of feeling on it, that is because your ISO sensitivity is way too high. So when taking an image, I always try to keep my ISO at 100 during daytime uh, because you want to make sure that you're getting excellent quality images without any sort of noise. So always, always, always keep that at 100 when you're shooting outside, if you're shooting with enough daylight, you don't need to bump up your ISO. So you want to make sure that the level of noise, the level of sensitivity is to a minimum. If you're shooting at night, you do want to bump that up just a little bit just because you will need more light. So if you do need more light, it'll give you more light. Six of shutter speed. So now with shutter speed, it controls the speed of an image. It controls how much light is captured onto the sensor of the camera. And so the sensor of the camera holds all your pixels. So the bigger the sensor, the more pixels you have and the better quality of an image you get. However, you do not need to rely on a massive size sensor to have to create an amazing image. You can have a pretty decent medium sized sensor of like 10 megapixels, 16 megapixels and still get amazing images. So my camera holds 16 megapixels, which is 16 million pixels. So that is a lot of pixels in one picture. So I'm sure if you have a DSLR, it'll take incredible photos. Um, but if you do R Pro, you do know that if you have a bigger sensor, yes, your quality of images is better. But if you're a good photographer, your images will always turn out really well. So shutter speed controls how much light is captured on the sensor. So the lower the number gets, the slower the shutter speed gets, meaning more light comes onto the sensor. 
So when your shutter speed is at 100, it's at a good mix length. It'll capture just enough light to hit um, your sensor. If you have the sensor, or sorry, if you have the shutter speed at 50, it'll be a lot slower, and you can hear it um, capturing the light, and then the shutter speed opening, dot 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 closing, because it's capture, it's taking in all the light that it needs. So again, if you need more light in a photograph, if sun is dim, if the sun is setting, then yes, you can also um, control your shutter speed instead. But it really depends on the photo you're taking. So what I like to do when taking a portrait is keeping my shutter speed at a minimum of 100 to 400, really depending on how much light I am getting inside my house, outside, um, or even outside. So if I'm getting this much light that you see here, I would keep my shutter speed around 100 to 200 because I know that I don't need to add more light, but I really want to have a sharp focus image so it captures the image really fast. So if you have, if you're shooting at night, your ISO, if you're shooting at night, your shutter speed should be, most likely has to be maybe 50 to 30. Um, the number should be at 50. 30 to 50 and once your shutter speed is at 30 it officially cannot be taken properly handheld at 30 you want to make sure that your camera is on a tripod so it captures the image that you're taking outside at night really really clear and crisp meaning your hands aren't shaking and jumbling so if your um, shutter speed is at a, like a thousand a thousand two hundred thousand two fifty um, it is going to capture it super fast Sometimes not, not sometimes too fast to even let light in. So really, really depends on your light. And um, I will continue with that actually after I discuss aperture. So what your aperture does is it controls depth of field. So depth of depth of field refers to a distance or a range um, of your subject being particularly sharp. So with that, um, in other terms. Basically, the background would be completely out of focus and your subject would be an insane, sharp, amazing focus. That is what depth of field controls. And so, this is a little different. So, the smaller the number of depth of field, so f1.8 would be the smallest with my camera lens, um, the, the, the bigger the opening, so if that makes any sense. So, the smaller the number, the bigger the lens opening. So 1.8 also lets a lot of light in. And then as you gradually get bigger and bigger, as the numbers get bigger and bigger, the smaller the lens gets, meaning less light gets in and more is in focus in the photograph. So if you're taking a portrait, you wanna make sure, just like I said in my last photography video, that the eyes are always very sharp. And even if you want some depth of field in the background, if you want the background to be out of focus, Try to keep your photograph, your camera set up to at least, even you can keep it between a 2.8 um, or 5.6 really. If you really want everything in focus, the biggest you should go is an f8 because that will get, get everything in focus really. Um, it, it does give you a bit more options to go higher. However, I don't recommend doing that unless you're shooting landscape and unless you have a lot of light coming into your sensor and you really need to actually tone down the light, you would bump up your aperture if you're okay with not having any sort of depth of field in your photograph. So with that, I hope that is how uh, the easiest I can clarify each setting. Um, the next thing is how do you figure out, how do, you, how do I figure out when my photo is completely exposed properly. Well, there is an exposure level meter actually that you can see in your info setting and I point it out to you here, wherever I'll place that. And so I will be, so as you can see, when I scroll to the, when the meter scrolls towards the left hand side, that means your photo is too bright. It'll tell you when it's too bright, if it's a stop too bright, if it's two stops too bright, three stops too bright. And then when I scroll back, it should be right in the middle. And that lets me know that my photo is perfectly exposed, that there, it's not over or underexposed. If I scroll more to the right, um, it'll get darker. It'll tell me that my photo is underexposed, it is too dark, 
Um, it's a stop too dark, two stops too dark, three stops too dark. So if I scroll up, um, it'll show me that it is properly exposed. And I could be scrolling the aperture, I could be scrolling the shutter speed, or I could be changing my ISO. Any one of those settings can help make a photo brighter or darker. So in my um, experience, what I like to do is I like to keep my aperture placed at one specific setting because I love depth of field. I love having um, my subject enti like entirely in focus but having some depth of field in the back. So what I like to do is um, keep my aperture at a 2.8 or 2.5 and then I like to keep my ISO at 100, so I would only be using my shutter speed to control my light. So what I like to do is scroll with my shutter speed, and if I am too close to 30, I automatically will put it on a tripod and shoot with my tripod, because I don't want any sort of images to be blurry. But if I know that I can handhold hand my camera, I will handhold it, but I'll make sure that I'm holding it so tight that I can still get a really sharp image. So that is the basics of how I um, work my camera and how I um, specifically try, like the basics of working any DSLR, DSLR camera it are these three settings. So I really hope this helps you guys and I really hope that I have made some sort of sense to you. Um, if I haven't come across too clear, please don't be afraid to leave any sort of questions in the comments box below. I will definitely get to them. Um, if anything, I will also leave my email. My email should be in um, on my photography Instagram, which I will link in my description box below. You guys can send me emails if you have any sort of questions do, that have to do with photography. I will answer them as soon as I like as soon as I possibly can. Um, and if you like this video, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and uh, let me know how I did. I hope I helped you out. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.